Hello, everyone. Uh, the Facebook Live action had uh, uh, is, is acting sort of strange on me this morning, so I'm not sure that you can hear me. Uh, it, I think everything is set just the way it's always been set. But uh, can uh, could somebody leave me a comment and let me know that you're hearing me okay? Uh, and if not, that's why I'm holding up this sign that says, can you hear me? Uh, I'm not getting any. Oh, loud and clear. Thank you, Marguerite. Well, good morning. And welcome to the second to the last installment of Ask Baba Lon. Questions to uh, answers to questions of life and magic. Uh, it's been a lot of fun reading this book, and uh, and it's been a lot of fun reading all of these books. And uh, I truly look forward in these wild and challenging times to uh, getting together with you every morning at this time. Uh, some of these uh, installments have uh, gotten uh, an incredible amount of views. Uh, Several of, of them have had over 2,000 views, and, uh, and many of them are over 1,000 views uh, uh, each uh, over a period of time. So I know that quite a few of you uh, enjoy me doing this, uh, and I'd like to continue if I may. Uh, I think uh, in a couple days when I start a new one, I think what I would like to do uh, if it's okay, I've had a lot of requests for this, uh, for me to read uh, my The Key to Solomon's Key, Secrets of Magic and Masonry, and the uh, uh, title of the newest edition of it is, uh, Is This the Lost Symbol of Freemasonry? And uh, I enjoyed it. It's Constance's favorite book. Uh, that I that I've written and she's uh, encouraged me to, uh, uh, to to check with you to see if you don't mind me uh, reading it. Uh, there's a great sec section of this book which uh, is uh, an edited version of the classic uh, Lesser Key of Solomon, and perhaps uh, when we get to that section toward the end. Uh, we may debate whether whether or not uh, that's really a a fun thing to uh, to be repeating every morning that list of spirits and things like that, uh, which is not uh, completely unique to me uh, and is available almost anywhere. Uh, but uh, the bulk of the material <laughs> is me and. Uh, uh, it's writing about the very serious and uh, uh, interesting subject of the origins uh, of Freemasonry, the Knights Templar, uh, and uh, Western civilization in general. So I hope, with your permission and with your uh, continued attendance, uh, probably on Thursday, or Friday, I'll start uh, uh, reading a key, the key to Solomon's key. Uh, it's available, of course, where uh, books are sold, but uh, most uh, uh, quickly you can get it most quickly on on Amazon. And I believe uh, there's a Kindle edition, but I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, there's still time for you to to get it and follow along if you would like to do that. That being said, two very interesting uh, uh, letters that I uh, talk about today. First one's very short. My answer is very short. Uh, and the second one is where, where am I on the tree of life? Uh, and that one has a little more lengthy uh, answer to it. So, without further ado, 
Can I have a vasectomy? <laughs> Excuse me. Can I have a vasectomy and still be a sex magician is the title. Dear Babala, if I may be permitted, I have a question to ask. Uh, you may choose to ignore this question, and I will not be offended in the least if you do. However, I feel that you may be the best person to come to in regards to this question, as you are one of the most knowledgeable people on the subject and certainly the most accessible. And I would be remiss if I were not to at least ask you. I'm curious if getting a vasectomy can cause sexual-based magical operations to be rendered ineffective due to the lack of the spermatozoon, causing a, short, causing a sort of magical impotency, or perhaps infertility would be a better word. Or is the physical cells an unnecessary part of the equation? Any answer, even if it is off, <laughs> will be much appreciated. Name withheld. Dear Name withheld, excellent question. And I will give you my answer based on my current understanding of things. Even at my age, I'm learning and changing my mind all the time. First of all, there are certain sexual-based magical operations that a vasectomy will render ineffective or highly prob problematic. They include workings in which the object of the operation is to become the biological father of a child. or workings in which the object of the operation is the fertilization of a human egg, or three, workings in which the object of the operation involves magically charging or otherwise altering a living sperm cell or any working that would require the male operator to believe with unshakable conviction that his body is presently capable of producing and issuing live sperm cells, or any biological, chemical, or alchemical procedure or experiment requiring one's own living sperm cells. All other magical operations, which in my opinion is most of them, all other sex magic operations, which in my opinion is most of them, in which semen, either by itself or in combination with other substances, is used as a medium, material base, or talisman, should not be affected by your vasectomy unless your anxiety and doubts over the matter cloud or otherwise distract your ability to concentrate on the object of the operation. I hope this has been helpful. Best of luck with your practice, Baba Lan. Okay, I hope I made that clear. Where am I on the tree of life? Dear Babylon, I know you must be busy, but if you have a couple of minutes, can I ask something? I was introducing a friend to the subject of the relation between the paths and the tarot, and she asked me a question I'm still having a tough time trying to answer. Do we go through different paths at different times in our lives? Are we on a fixed path until our evolution takes us to the next in order? Or 
are we on a particular sephira during a fixed period in life as our current base of operations and from there experience the rest of the paths until we move to the next sephira also is there a specific tarot spread that can answer that i feel a bit frustrated because after all these years reading about the subject I've had such a hard time trying to answer this question. Name withheld. Hi, name withheld. Little questions seldom demand little answers. <laughs> Don't be surprised if you see this published someday. Perhaps the reason you are frustrated and having a hard time with these questions is because they are perhaps the most fundamentally good questions a person could ask about this subject, and because ultimately we won't properly know the answer until we experience the very illumination these Kabbalistic practices and meditations are designed to trigger. Until we've reached the destination, I believe we are not equipped to have more than just a partial and unsatisfactory understanding of the journey. My grasp or non-grasp of the matter is this. First of all, the answer to each of your questions is both simultaneously yes and no. Let's start with the assumption that the ultimate nature of being is consciousness and that ultimately everything, matter, energy, thought, even existence and non-existence are aspects of consciousness. Next, let's for the moment assume that the tree of life represents the entirety of this consciousness. Kabbalists assume that human beings have or are capable of developing the spiritual equipment to be the perfect reflection of this totality of consciousness. The Sephiroth represent ten, ten major landmarks of this consciousness. The lower on the tree, the lower the vibratory frequency of consciousness. The paths that join the Sephiroth are literally the consciousness equivalent to nerves, sinews, arteries, vessels that pass influences to and from one or more of these frequencies of consciousness. They are the inner workings of this machine. In other words, if each of us were fully awake, we'd realize that we're already enlightened, already the perfect image of this absolute consciousness, number one. But most of us are not fully awake. I certainly am not. Neither are we fully asleep. The level of consciousness we currently identify with most solidly, having provided ourselves with a firm foundation by mastering the levels beneath us, at any given moment could be viewed as our initiatory level or degree. There are seasons of our life when we firmly are entrenched and seasons when we have moments when we backslide and seasons where we glimpse higher levels. There are even times when we momentarily pop into the very highest of consciousness frequencies without having, as it were, passed through the intermediate levels. Such cruelly tantalizing moments they are. I'm probably not explaining this very well. Maybe it's best just to say that the great work 
is doing whatever it takes. Grow however we need to grow. Evolve how we need to evolve to identify our self with the progressively higher and higher levels of consciousness. To get an idea of what I'm talking about, Try to remember your spiritual worldview of 15 years ago. Then, imagine projecting the you of today back into that world. Would you feel a bit like a moron? Would you feel like you had a lobotomy? Would you trade consciousness places with that moron? All that things such as the Tree of Life and Tarot cards do is offer little tools, little tricks that can provide a vocabulary and a filing system to organize your particular route for this journey. The map isn't the journey, and everybody's journey is a little different. Our destination, however, is the same. And it is my firm conviction that we'll all say the same thing at the end of the journey. Shit, I've been here all along. Baba Law. Okay, tomorrow we will continue with the final, yes, the final letter. Uh, and the question is on reincarnation. So until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself during these hard and crazy times. Enjoy yourself. Be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.